Welcome back to your weekly good news show that makes your morning coffee or trip to work just that little bit brighter. And in this week's episode, we're going to learn about the town in Italy that's responsible for processing 15% of all the clothing that gets recycled around the world. How the last truly wild horse species was saved from extinction and was able to be reintroduced into Kazakhstan after a 200 year absence. The man who's on a mission to create 20,000 green roofs across his favela to help his community survive increasingly common heat waves, and the wind turbines in Finland that are able to automatically stop if they detect endangered birds getting too close. So like I said, our first story is about the town in Italy that recycles over 140 million kilos of used clothes every year to reduce the amount of textiles going to landfill and help clothing companies use more sustainable materials. So the Italian city of Prato is one of the country's major textile hubs and back in the 19th century factories there were forced to start recycling clothes as they couldn't afford new materials and now all the skills and techniques they developed are playing a crucial role in combating textile waste. It's estimated that around the world 100 billion garments are produced every year whilst a massive 92 million tonnes are thrown out and depending on where you are these clothes might be sent to landfill, shipped overseas or just dumped in massive piles in the desert. But so to help keep the materials in the supply chain, Prado is using its recycling expertise to turn old rags and scraps into brand new items, and it's estimated as much as 15% of all clothing that gets recycled passes through Prado, but the process first starts at secondhand stores. So once clothes are donated, if they're unable to be sold, they're bundled up and sent to Prado, where they're first separated by colour and material before being shredded, washed and dried, and the factories estimate that they're able to use 97% of the clothes they receive. The recycling effort brings together expertise from 170 factories in the area that each specialise in different aspects of the process from the shredding to the making of the yarn and crafting of the final item and the recycled textiles are used by a whopping 7,000 companies. And so for the second story of this week's episode, I wanted to show you guys the moment critically endangered horses return to Kazakhstan after a 200 year absence. So Persevolsky's horses are considered to be the world's last truly wild horse species and historically they roamed the grasslands of Europe and Central Asia where they interacted with humans as much as 2,000 years before domesticated horses. However, in the 1800s the species began to decline due to impacts from agriculture and a changing environment which led to them going extinct in the wild in the 1960s and they would have been completely wiped out if it wasn't for 12 individuals that were already in captivity. But so after a successful breeding program that incorporated zoos from all around the world, including Taronga Zoo in Australia and Prague Zoo in the Czech Republic, the species was brought back from the brink. And despite living in captivity for so long, the species was carefully managed to retain as many of their wild instincts as possible, allowing the horses to return to China in 1985, Mongolia in 1992, and now they've just been released into a 1.2 million acre nature reserve in central Kazakhstan. Overall, it's estimated that there are now 2,500 Przewalski's horses in captivity in the wild and what's most amazing is that this recovery was started with only 12 individuals. And so now it's time for the story that 59% of you guys voted for last week, which is about the man that's on a mission to create the greenest favela in Brazil to help his community overcome heat waves and show that green roofs are for everyone, not just the rich. So Louis Cassiano lives in one of Sao Paulo's favelas where dense housing and a lack of greenery forces residents to endure consistently higher temperatures than the wealthier parts of the city that have more trees, parks and green spaces. And those high temperatures can be extremely dangerous especially as the people living in the favelas are already more likely to have poor health and with electricity being expensive and super unreliable the residents have limited options to cool down. And so after his community suffered through a record-breaking heatwave, Louis explored the potential of using plants to cool down his house and he found that his green roof would consistently stay around 86 degrees Fahrenheit while those around him were getting as hot as 122. Louis says that his mission was started out of necessity as he couldn't depend on the government for assistance and now his goal is to help every one of the 20,000 homes in his community get their very own green roof. Louis has since gone on to start his own not-for-profit called Green Roof Favela to teach his community how to establish and maintain green roofs and he also works with scientists to explore new materials and ideas they can use to make the project even better. 
And finally, for the last story of this week's episode, we're going to learn about the wind farm that can automatically stop if it detects endangered birds getting too close. So as part of the environmental approvals of this Finnish wind farm, the company was required to implement measures to protect endangered species such as white-tailed seagulls from being hit by the blades, so they came up with a bird radar system. And so similar to the technology air traffic control towers use, the bird radar is able to identify the speed and altitude of incoming birds, as well as determine if they're flapping their wings or just gliding so that it can accurately predict their flight path. The system is able to detect large birds from 10 kilometers away and smaller ones within 3 kilometers. and if a potentially at-risk bird is identified, a signal is sent from the radar to the turbine which automatically stops it in just 10 seconds. And over the 7 years that the radar has been in operation, there have been over 15,000 shutdowns and incredibly only one reported collision which was actually when the radar wasn't working due to extremely poor weather conditions. So that's everything that I could squeeze into this week's episode, but as always, send through all the good news that you guys come across so I can include it next week and make sure to follow so you don't miss it.